When you fly VFR out of an airport on a beautiful day, you have incredible freedom of when and how to depart. You're free to depart whenever you're ready on whatever route keeps you safe and in compliance with the regs. For this freedom, we take on a big responsibility. While in visual conditions, we are responsible for maintaining traffic separation and avoiding terrain and obstacles. Once the weather drops below visual meteorological conditions, we can no longer effectively practice the see and avoid principle and we need a little help. This is where the National Airspace System and Air Traffic Control come into play. This is Dan from Flight Insight, helping out the AOPA Air Safety Institute with more videos in their Beyond Proficient series with an emphasis on how to operate more safely in the IFR environment. This one is all about tips for leveraging modern tools for planning and filing IFR flights. It all begins with planning our route. We'd love to fly as direct a route as possible between our departure and destination to limit time and complications, but ATC may need us on airways flying between certain fixes, and perhaps on assigned departures and arrivals. So what does ATC want us to file? Well, as it turns out, it can be complicated unless you know what to expect. Each air traffic control facility has standard operating procedures, governing routes through their airspace depending on airport, time of day, type of aircraft, weather, special use airspace, and other factors. These SOPs are subject to change and are not published for use by pilots. In addition, different facilities may have letters of agreement between themselves standardizing procedures for traffic flowing from one sector to the next. And finally, a bit of discretion on the part of the air traffic controller issuing the clearance is allowed. Some of these factors result in what we know as published tower in route or tech routes and preferred routes that are listed in the chart supplement. But these routes are limited, available in only certain areas between certain airports, and not always suitable for your aircraft's performance. So without a look behind the curtain, how should we file? Many pilots will tell you to just file a direct route and let ATC sort it out. But that's not doing anyone any favors. You might get a direct routing on a shorter flight outside of busy airspace, but let's say you're flying from Gaithersburg, Maryland to White Plains, New York. A direct route looks almost perfect. It keeps us over low terrain and north of the big Bravo airports in Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York. Now technically, a direct route filing on a longer flight is contrary to the aim, which calls for at least one waypoint in each center sector crossed en route. We'll be flying from Washington Center's airspace through New York's and on to Boston's. So we file direct anyways and call up for our clearance. We know we're going to get a full route amendment and we're ready to just fly whatever we're given. ATC clears us with the following. Cleared to Westchester Airport via direct Woolley, Agard, Sea Isle, Victor 139, Riced, Riced for arrival. We write down all those unfamiliar fixes and airways, read back the clearance, and enter the route into our GPS. With the full route in, we're dismayed to see that we're being taken well off the coast, not a comfortable position in a small single engine piston. What we've done is outsourced our flight plan into ATC. Rather than filing a route based on our requirements and considerations for fuel, weather, and TFRs, we've let ATC give us whatever the computer spits out and they're not looking at the route from the same flight planning perspective as we are. So let's be a bit more academic about our planning. During instrument training, we all go through the rite of passage of carefully planning a route along Victor Airways. Let's do a route to White Plains here. First, we'll go direct to the Westminster VOR. Then we'll join Victor 3 and take that to the Vinny intersection. And then stay on the same airway through the Modena, Salberg, and Carmel VORs, proceeding from there direct to our destination. We've really done our homework and feel that since we've selected the most logical route, it's bound to be the one that ATC has cleared us for. Will our diligence be rewarded? Not likely. As we said, ATC routings are a product of many things like agreements between sectors, traffic congestion, and workloads in addition to whatever the most expeditious route is. This means that even a well thought out route can be met by the controller with the dreaded, I have an amendment to your route, or advise ready to copy full route clearance, or even, have you got your pen handy? Okay, so why doesn't ATC just tell us what route they want us to fly so we can incorporate it into our flight plan before stepping into the aircraft? It turns out that while we can't just call up ATC and pre-arrange a route, 
we can have a look at routes historically assigned to other aircraft between the same two airports. One great way to do this is using ForeFlight. Other EFBs like Garmin Pilot offer similar solutions to what we'll explore with ForeFlight. On the Flight Plan tab, we put in our airport pair, Gaithersburg and White Plains. Now on the top right, we're going to tap Routes to open up the Route Advisor. The first route is a recommended route. ForeFlight computes a route based on the aircraft performance profile we'd have already selected, time and fuel considerations, and FAA preferred routes and trending ATC cleared routes. If we tap on a route, it highlights on the map. This is the route we saw earlier that takes us well offshore. It's not going to work for us, and besides, there's a weather system sitting on top of it. So while ForeFlight is suggesting this route based on its likelihood of getting that cleared as filed instruction in our clearance, we should look at alternatives. The section beneath this has previously cleared routes. Again, we can tap individual ones to highlight them on the map. The last section is a route using airways. This is very similar to the exercise we went through creating our own route using the low and route chart. It doesn't take previous clearances or other factors into account though. This route starts at Baltimore, it's suitable for piston aircraft as noted, and it's been issued 15 times recently, so there's a good chance we'll get that if we file it. We can also choose the one below, starting at the dated intersection. It hasn't been issued as frequently, so we might not get it, but it has the advantage of being a shorter total distance, so we'll save on time and fuel. Let's go with that one. We'll file this now using ForeFlight. Tap Send to Flights and check that all the information is populated on the right hand side. The weather requires an alternate, so we'll file JFK. And now we can tap Proceed to File, our flight plan is in there, with the route we selected visible, and we'll file it. Within seconds, we see a new route populated below the filed route. It's the same one we looked at in the route advisor that starts at the Baltimore VOR. ATC has automatically updated our route. This is what we can expect to receive when we get our clearance. ForeFlight will also have a pop-up with our new route asking if we want to update our plan on the navlog, which we'll do. ForeFlight and other EFBs often require paid subscription. Fortunately, we can use the site flightaware.com to do the same research on IFR routes. Right on the homepage, we can enter the airport pair we intend to fly. KGAI and KHPN, and see that there's been a recent flight between these airports. It was a Cirrus SR-22. Let's click on it to see the details. We can see the route it flew on the map. Notice it was routed to the west of a big weather system. And if we scroll down, on the right side, just beneath Peppa Pig, we hit pay dirt. It's the IFR routing this flight received. It starts at the Baltimore VOR and picks up airways from there. We're much more likely to be given a route that was cleared for an earlier aircraft, so we do well to consider filing this one. FlightAware can also keep us up to date on the route our filed flight is likely to be assigned, just as ForeFlight was able to by updating our expected route. We're going to put our end number into the search bar, and our newly filed route from Gaithersburg to White Plains is the first one up. Let's tap that, and we can see our routing on the dashed line between the two airports. If we tap more details, we can see the route right at the bottom, the same amended one that ForeFlight gave us, beginning at the Baltimore VOR. Now we're armed with some important details that will help us when copying down and reading back the clearance. Let's see what we can fill into the CRAFT acronym with our expected clearance before we even call ATC. We can fill in our destination, KHPN. In the modern era, it's almost unheard of to get a clearance limit that is anything other than the destination airport, so let's make the assumption that we'll get that. Our route we can crib straight from ForeFlight or FlightAware. Keep in mind that none of this information is official, and only the cleared route we receive from the controller will be what we're actually assigned. The altitude is 7000. The departure frequency and squawk we're not certain of yet. This will be assigned by ATC. The taxiway diagram lists 128.7, but busy sectors like Potomac will have several possible frequencies, but we're off to a good start. Let's contact the controller on the clearance frequency of 121.6. Potomac clearance Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango on the ground at Gaithersburg picking up IFR to White Plains. Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango Potomac clearance, I have a full root clearance advised ready to copy. Ready to copy 8 Foxtrot Tango. Okay, so we're not getting our clearance as filed, but we were expecting that. Cessna 8 Foxtrot Tango clear to the Westchester Airport via radar vectors to the Baltimore VOR, join Victor 93 to Lima Romeo Papa, Echo Tango X-Ray, Foxtrot Juliet Charlie, Hotel Uniform Oscar, India Golf November, Victor 157, 
Hotel Alpha Alpha Romeo Papa, direct destination. Maintain 2000, expect 7,010 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 125.52, squawk 3614. So we'll read all of that back. And if we got it right, we'll hear Cessna A Foxtrot Tango, read back correct. Even though we didn't file the route we ended up being cleared for, a bit of advanced planning on our part can really cut down on the guesswork of copying down and reading back the IFR clearance. In less complicated airspace, using these tools will increase the likelihood of getting that magic cleared as file from the controller. But even in busy, less predictable airspace like here in the Northeast Corridor, we can be better equipped to hear read back correct. <laughs> 